Kamaya Teresaya Tasha Mobley was born in a hospital in Florida on July 10, 1998. Kamaya's mother, Shanara Mobley, just 16 years old at the time, welcomes a nurse into her room. Her baby, just eight hours old, is handed to the nurse and the new mother and the nurse chat for a bit while baby Kamaya sleeps in the nurse's arms. It's then that the nurse turns and walks out of Shanara's room with baby Kamaya still in her arms, never to return again. This is the kidnapping case of Kamaya Mobley, and it's multi-layered and will challenge you to ask yourself to find empathy for multiple people in this story. This is True Crime and Headlines with Jules and Joe, and this is Episode 6, Kidnapped, the Kamaya Mobley Story. is True Crime and Headlines with Jules and Joe. I'm Joe. And I'm Jules. And we are your True Crime besties. Welcome back, babes. (laughs) Uh, We are here again today to honor um, victims in true crime and to bring awareness to ongoing cases. As always, we have our sources and links for further research and action on our website, truecrimeandheadlines.com, under episode notes. And you can go to our website and buy us a coffee if you would like, and we will give you a shout out on air. You also can help us grow by giving us a five-star review wherever you get your podcast. And don't forget to subscribe. Audio Jules is on sound. <laughs> uh, Audio Steve is taking a step back to work on his novel. So he has big plans to uh, publish some books for his grandchildren. And we are so excited for him and wish him all the best with that. <laughs> So if things get a little turbulent, you know why. <laughs> Audio jewels. <is> <laughs> Wish us bu- luck. <laughs> I'm on the buttons. <laughs> All right. Let's go. You ready? Let's do it. Before 16-year-old African-American Shanara becomes a first-time mom whose baby is ripped from her arms, she does admittedly have a really rough life. USA Today reports that Shanara was raped at the age of nine and the rapes would continue for the next few years. Shannara reflects how her life was a combination of horrible circumstances handed to her in life mixed with her poor choices that she made as a teenager, especially since at just 13, she was running around on the streets and skipping school frequently. I do wonder about her perception of what happened to her and the traumatic impact that it could have on a kid and how it manifests as they were older, if she's even aware of the degree of trauma that she went through. Yeah. Yeah. When she talks about making poor decisions, when somebody is kind of living a life of trauma, right? So that's complex trauma when you have more than one trauma um, kind of layered on top of each other. I'm assuming that, that the ongoing rape was not the only traumatic thing that she was experiencing, but absolutely it creates some dysregulation, anxiety, depression, impulsivity. A lot of different things can come up as a result of complex trauma, thus kind of influencing decisions that she were to make. And also she's 13, right? Her prefrontal lobe is not developed at that point. And so making good decisions is already difficult. And when you throw complex trauma on top of that, of course, you're going to have difficulty. Shannara would go on to become pregnant at just 14 years old, but sadly, she would miscarry that pregnancy. And she would then move from homes to homes, staying with different relatives. And just to find more security and stability, she recalls lying about her age to get live in nanny jobs. And of course, this is also when she is supposed to be in school. So it would mean skipping school for really long periods of time. And she said this was a way for her to get more money and then she could be independent and run around those streets some more. So it just fueled that cycle of behavior for her. So many questions already with kind of surrounding trauma. So we have a young child who was abused starting at age nine, several years. Where, who was it? Where were mom and dad? Were any caregivers aware of this and let it continue to happen? Because then there's again, loss of trust 
in caregivers failing to protect you. Sometimes too, when you have any sort of trauma, whether sexual or not, it disrupts attachment. So later on, she said she became pregnant again at 14. Sometimes promiscuous sexual behavior is a, an attempt to experience that intimacy that she didn't necessarily get as an infant with caregivers, an infant or a child is with caregivers. At 15, Shanara finds herself pregnant again. So this is the second pregnancy, the first one being at 14 that ended in miscarriage. And she wanted to do everything in her power to give her baby girl a healthy start to life. And the baby's father was a man seven years older than Shanara, 22-year-old Craig Aiken. And Craig's mother lived across the street from Shanara's uncle, and that's where she was living at okay. the time. And Craig goes on to try to set the record straight about a lot of misinformation that was spread about him. He says that she told him she was 18 at the time, but she was actually 15, which goes along with her saying she was lying about her age all the time and living a life that was much older than she was. It does, but that doesn't excuse the crime. Is he in prison for statutory rape? No. Does he ever get charged? I do not believe so. That's really interesting. Who would have to press those charges? You know, that's a good question, but I'm wondering the hospital when she... Well, the hospital is in a bit of... Yeah. (laughs) Let's go into that. As Shannara was often finding herself in trouble, she lands herself in juvenile detention. And while pregnant, the center helps her procure items for her baby. And while she's there, she meets another young mother who is also in the center. And the young mother already has a daughter named Kamaya. And she actually loved the way it sounded. So she decides to name her daughter Kamaya as well. What happens next is heartbreaking. Shanara's uncle takes her to the hospital after her water breaks. But when it is time for her epidural, you know, the nurses usher her uncle and who Shanara referred to as his lady friend out of the room. But, you know, they leave and then they keep leaving. And they leave the hospital entirely and they never come back. So now you're what, 16 delivering this baby on your own? Correct. And Craig, the father of the baby, is in jail. And it would later go on. Okay, why is he in jail? um, I am not sure on that, but it's not statutory, right? It's not, it's not that. Um, the father, baby's father is in jail and he would actually later go on to say and to set the record straight that he didn't even know he had a baby on the way. He didn't know that Shannara was pregnant and, and having a baby. And so 16 years Shannara, like you said, is left alone to go through labor and delivery without anybody except the hospital staff to support her. At around 8 a.m., a nurse dressed in hospital scrubs enters Shanara's room and he, she lets her know that she's the nurse assigned to her and her baby. And she proceeds to stay and talk to Shanara for five consecutive hours. Oh, five hours. I'm thinking you're going to say five minutes and I'm going to think that's normal. She's in her room for five hours? Yeah, and we know. On so the, this is not the nurse. We know on that side hmm. because nurses are in and out and they have multiple Patients. Patients and responsibilities. Yeah. Shannara, 16, alone, first time there, exhausted. And this nurse is in scrubs. What would you know to, to question? I mean, I, I cannot fault this young, this young mother. No, it's not her fault. Absolutely. No. Yeah, yeah, absolutely not. I mean, I, it, in that situation, I don't know. It's exhausting to give birth. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Traumatic enough uh, when you have somebody there but to you support have you. Have, like patient care techs, nurses assistants, the real nurse coming in and out during this time too. Yeah, bizarre. Um, unless it's like that really long first stretch, but I never got that long stretch without someone coming in. Five hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that never happened. It's exhausting in the hospital every minute. Knock, knock. <sighs> during this time, the two, the two women, so we've got Shanara, the young woman, and the nurse quote, the adult, they're talking and sharing stories. And Shannara confides to the nurse how she felt unsure about how everything was going to work out. And she was 
kind of nervous. She's a new mom and she's by herself and she's, she just wanted to get home with the baby. And the nurse assures Shinara then that she's going to take Kamaya just for 15 minutes to test her in the nursery to see if she has a fever. Which is normal, like maybe not a fever, but is normal for them to take the baby for assessment. And she walks out of the room with the baby in her arms. Not normal. Yeah, you never transfer a baby without it in the rolling bassinet in a hospital ever. They would never walk a baby in their arms. They don't even let a new mother do that. Yeah, but this was in what, 98? Yeah. So it may have been a little different. Yeah, maybe. Shannara notifies the hospital staff, which by the way, is now known as UF Health Jacksonville, but then it was University Hospital, um, that her baby was taken. This nurse never returns. And the hospital immediately notifies the police and cars on the University Hospital campus are subsequently stopped and searched. Since baby Kamaya did not have a photo yet, they had to go off of the young mother's features and digitally create one to release. Listen to how the abductor got the newborn baby out of the hospital. She puts baby Kamaya in a bag and she walks right out the doors with the newborn baby in a bag zipped up. So obviously we have found this person because we, we know how she got out. Yes. Spoiler. Ugh. She then proceeded to her car and she drove the baby from Florida back to where she lives in South Carolina. And she then tells her family that she gave birth and the newborn baby is indeed her baby. So this would have to be someone that knew Shannara's story because you cannot walk into any hospital room in there, introduce yourself, get away with the things that she has done. Now you cannot, correct. Yeah, you can't now. I feel like she had to know Shannara and her story to know what room to go into. Interesting. Hmm. (gasps) The abductor, a woman named Gloria Williams. Gloria had been struggling with her mental health post a traumatizing miscarriage which she kept a secret from her family. So as far as the family knew, she was still pregnant. Oh, okay. She would go on to say how she knew she lost the pregnancy and it was confirmed in an ultrasound. However, her stomach and her breasts did continue to grow. And she was in a very toxic and abusive relationship with a man named Charles Manigo. And she really hoped that the pregnancy would turn their relationship around. She begins to spiral quickly and she loses custody of her two sons. And one day, she suddenly walks out of her nursing home job in a fog, and she gets in her car and drives hours, ends up going from South Carolina to Florida. She was driving aimlessly for miles and miles away from her abusive relationship and her life crumbling. So she's this woman with not much to lose in her mind who is possibly in a postpartum state, And she put into plan to enter the maternity ward at University Hospital. Now, she claims when she went in there, it was not her plan to take a baby. She was looking at the babies in the nursery through the window, and she's on security footage pacing up and down the ward. But when she pops in and sees Shannara alone, a young mother, and talks with her, it's then that she realizes she will be taking this baby. Oh, my goodness. Opportunity. Posters were made and placed all over the university hospital campus as well in local establishments. And the abductor, Gloria Williams, was described as African-American, possibly wearing a brunette wig between 25 to 35 years old. And police sketches were made. And the next few years, over 2,000 leads would be pursued but come up empty. Now, I told you that the father, Craig Aiken, did not know he had a baby on the way. So while he is in jail, he finds out in the same meeting that he had a baby girl. However, she was abducted and he can't do anything because he is in jail. Shannara was left to go home without her baby after having given birth alone and now returns to a bedroom full of all those items she has for Kamaya. Like a worst nightmare for a parent. Yeah. But all of which Kamaya would never see or use. As Shannara tries to carry on with her life, she shares how many people accused her of orchestrating the kidnapping in exchange for money. And she falls into a deep depression and she tries to take her own life. 
Uh, But she did work really, really hard to pick herself up and carry on. And a few years later, I believe it was five years later, she does have another child. And then she would go on to have three more. So she lives for her children. She lives to be a mom. She loves being a mother. And although she does admit she has a lot of trust issues, she tries her hardest for her kids. And I'm wondering if what she calls trust issues is really trauma, PTSD, yeah, the hypervigilance, hyperstartle, hyperawareness. Yeah. Meanwhile, in Walterboro, South Carolina, 16 year old Alexis Maningo lives a well rounded life with her mother, stepfather, and her two older brothers. She does well in school, is involved in her church, and she often has friends over to hang out at her home with her family. However, like most 16 year olds, Alexis is excited to get a job and a car. And in order to do so, she needs to present certain personal identification documents. After asking her mother about her social security card, what her mother tells her next will forever change her life. Alexis does not have a social security card or birth certificate because Alexis was kidnapped as a baby. With Williams saying she would turn herself in, Alexis pleaded with her mother not to do so. She didn't want to lose her mother, her abductor, Gloria Williams. So for two more months, they kept the secret between them until two anonymous tips lead the Center for Missing and Exploited Children to send investigators to Kamaya's high school where they pulled copies of her birth certificate and realized that it was fake. So they had enough to bring Gloria Williams into the police station to obtain a DNA test. Meanwhile, in Florida, every July 10th, Shannara buys a birthday cake for her daughter and places it in a freezer in hopes her daughter will return one day and they can celebrate together. And so you can— So she has 16—I can't take this. She has 16 birthday cakes in her freezer? I don't know if she kept them in there forever, Uh, but— I like how your mind, like, <laughs> but where do the frozen, <laughs> where, do the, where are the frozen cakes? <laughs> where will I put my frozen chicken nugget? <laughs> You're such a visual. I love it. <laughs> so you can imagine the, the weight of the amazing news that is delivered to Shannara after 18 years of sorrow and grief that her baby is alive. She's not only alive, But she's healthy, thriving, and she's safe. And then comes the next wave of pain. Kamaya is living under the name Alexis Manigo, and she was being cared for as the loving daughter of the abductor that took the baby from Shannara's arms. Her daughter was calling this woman, Gloria Williams, mom. I don't know how to even go about entering a place of empathy for any anyone in this in this situation it's such a unique situation but her daughter's taken her daughter's found and she was Shinar was stripped of the role as a mother and then replaced by this woman who took her baby and then what about what about the daughter yeah and it, she said that she's being raised by her mom and stepdad so I'm guessing that abuser that she was with at the time of the abduction is not correct She went on to have a different husband. Okay. Yeah. She left him eventually. So Kamaya's struggle is admittedly that she loves her mother, Gloria, and she still communicates with her. And she even goes on to ask for the early release of her mother. So her mother, Gloria, does go to trial and she does eventually plead guilty. And by pleading guilty, she removes a life sentence off the table And she is given, I believe it's 18 years in prison for her role, which she does show a lot of remorse for in court. You can see the videos of her bawling in court and asking for forgiveness from everybody, from all sides of her, of her family. And then on the flip side, you have Shannara, who is bawling on the stand, crying out, I am your mother. Gosh, I can't do this. Man, Kamaya struggles. She loves Gloria, still communicates with Gloria. Gloria's in jail. And she asks for the early release of Gloria. She's stating that she just wants her mom back home. She shares how she knows what her mother did to become her mother, 
But more importantly, she knows what kind of mother she is and how much she has given to her. Now, here is what Kamaya said in her written statement to the court. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. To whom it may concern. My name is Kamaya Mobley. I am writing this letter in support of my mother, Gloria Williams. So wait, now she does identify as Kamaya? Yeah. Okay. In this letter, she is through the court, and I wonder if it's because that is her. She's like between 16 and 18 at this point. Yeah, this is in uh, 21. This okay. Is, she, I believe, is 20 now. She would be was... 25 now. I just did the math in my head. She would be 25 now. Okay, so she's 21. Yeah. 20. To whom it may concern, my name is Kamaya Mobley. I am writing this letter in support of my mother, Gloria Williams. I would like to make it very clear that she is my mother. She raised me and not only provided for my needs, but she loved me unconditionally. I had a well-rounded life, and I am an independent, college-educated, and deeply spiritual person because of all my mom gave me. I am fully aware of how our lives came to be, what they are, and how my mom came to be my mom. I have met my birth parents, and I am grateful to have met my birth parents, and I'm grateful to have a second family in my life, especially to have siblings. I understand how none of this modifies the truth of the past, nor does it justify my mom's actions in any way. However, at the end of the day, I love my mother, and I wholeheartedly support her. I ask for the court's grace and mercy, as I need my mother home. Kamaya Mobley. Kamaya and Shannara, her biological mother, have had a rocky road to recovery. So they're admittedly very similar, and it's been an adjustment, to say the least, for each of them as they enter into their new lives. Mm. Shannara wanted to step up and be the mom and have that in, in her life. And some people reflect on, you know, it takes time to build that relationship and that bond. And she was eager to get that ball rolling yeah. because she ha- she was not given that chance. Their perspectives couldn't be any more different. Like the baby or Kamaya has been a person in her mind that has grown and developed and grieved for 16 years. So that relationship, in a sense, was developing and growing and changing for Shannara. But for Kamaya, she never knew about her mom. So there was no sort of narrative or memory or there was nothing there. And so, of course, Shannara wanted to pick up kind of where they were because she'd been saving cakes for 16 years and doing all the things. Yeah. So I can understand the difference there. Yeah. You know, Kamaya, in her mind, she had a great mom. Mm -hmm. She had one that she just loved. And she's being told at 16 that I kidnapped you and this is not who you really are. What do you want to do with this information? I'll turn myself in. She put that on, on, yeah. Gloria put that on on her Not and said, I'll turn myself in. No, I don't want you to. And Kamaya even went as far as to say, run, go. I don't want you to get arrested. Mm-hmm. That's very complex. Absolutely. So Shannara at one point even goes as far as to block Kamaya's number uh, at one point during the reunification because she was so frustrated and she said she felt disrespected because she was still going by the name that Gloria gave her and she wasn't going by Kamaya. And the fact that Mother's Day rolled around and Kamaya sent Mother's Day cards to Gloria in jail and she didn't even contact Shannara. Uh, I do believe that they are on better terms, but it is very complicated. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that it said that they love each other and they, you know, they continue to work on their relationship. That is so hard because it is not Shannara's fault. No, it's not. She is... I can She's under- a victim. She is a victim. Yeah. And I can understand the hurt. And I can also understand like having, again, you had this information for the last 16 years. Kamaya has not. And so she needs time to process it. But it's not like this is a strange mother-daughter relationship. Like this was ripped from her. And it's interesting that she has Kamaya at 16. And at 16, mm. Kamaya learns I just got chills yeah. <laughs> that she was not who she thought she was. And Kamaya's father, Clark, tells his Instagram community that he doesn't talk to Kamaya about Gloria. They don't talk about Gloria at all. He does believe Gloria brainwashed Kamaya. He was not up for the promotion or the support of Gloria receiving a lesser sentence. 
So when that came up, he spoke out saying he did not support it. And then you have his daughter begging in the letter for her mother's early release. And they're trying to establish a close, a close relationship. So Kamaya is close with her father, Clark. He seems very loving and, and loves his children and loves his daughter and is happy to have her and his life. But they don't talk about Gloria which I wonder how that plays out because that is an intense part of her life. Yeah. And what about the stepfather? Do we know what his role is like? No, I'm not sure on that one. I do know that I read it. I read a piece that he found out about the kidnapping right after Kamaya did, that Gloria approached him right after and told him about it. And then she told her parents about it. And then just a few months later, two anonymous tips came in about the possible identity of Kamaya. Mm. So what happened to Gloria? Well, I told you she was in jail and she did plead guilty and she showed remorse and she admits on stand that she didn't know the level or even type of grief that Clark and Shannara were going through because she took their daughter. Because she went up to South Carolina and she just went on with her life. She didn't look back into Florida. And she does go on to say that she thought so many times about bringing the baby back. But when she would look at Kamaya, she would just think, I love this girl so much. I can't, I just can't bring her back. So on June 8, 2018, Gloria Williams is sentenced to 18 years in prison for kidnapping. And she is expected to be released on July 9th, 2034 which is one day before Kamaya's birthday on July 10th and the anniversary of her abduction. So Lifetime did make a movie about this story, although it's said by the family that there was little input by anyone in the family for it. And it is called Stolen by My Mother, the Kamaya Mobley Story. Mm. So if you go and watch that, you know, you always have to understand the difference of Hollywood and true stories, do your own digging, look up things for yourself and understand everyone's truth is their truth, how they see it. So if someone says, I'm speaking my truth, that's still their version Mm -hmm. of the truth. When you're reading this case, there are a lot of different truths that come about and a lot contradict each other. I think what's important to know is that Kamaya was safe, found safe. She is loved by very many people. And she is trying to thrive and persevere given these circumstances that she did not ask for. Yeah. I wonder how her life varied growing up with Gloria versus what it would have been like with Shannara. That was a point a lot of people were bringing up. Kamaya ended up moving down to Florida and living with her father and the family. Hmm. And just within the last, I believe, six months, one of Kamaya's siblings, a young brother, 20 years old, Clark's son was shot and killed. So that's been in the news lately as well. Um, him trying to find justice for okay. that. So this family is, it's been through. So through Shannara and Clark are together. No, they're no. not together. He is, he is married to another woman now. Okay. And um, she is involved in Kamaya's life as well. If you want to know more about this case, you can go on to our website where we have linked all of these sources for you to see for yourself. And we want to encourage you guys to keep asking questions, to keep seeking answers, and to never stop learning. Thank you guys for being here. This has been True Crime and Headlines with Jules and Joe. And I'm Jules. And I'm Joe. And this is a production of Anley Audio House. You're loved, you matter, and your butt looks great. Thank you for being here. Joe, I'm out. And Lee. Audio House. LC. My mama is a podcaster. Bye, too.